Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Lee Ford and today it's a bit of a, a fun session. It's talking about having fun with AI in Teams. So it's not a particularly serious conversation. It's more just kind of a bit of a fun to show you know, how easy it is to kind of implement AI in, into a Teams uh, app. So um, we haven't got much time, so I'm going to get started. So quick bit about myself. Uh, I'm based in the UK. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, code, uh, put most of my samples on GitHub. Um, I've got a blog, which I blog very occasionally at, but I do do it, you know, every other month or something like that. I mainly work in M365 workloads, hence being on this call. Um, I do like to write code for a living and as a, a hobby, so hence why I'm talking today. Uh, I like to do a bit of exercise and a bit of DIY, um, uh, just enough DIY to be dangerous uh, anyway. So, OK, so what we're going to talk about is obviously we're going to talk about DALI. Um, we're going to talk about what it is, uh, what you can do with it and how you can use it. Um, and then we're going to talk about how that then maps into Teams. So how do we implement into Teams uh, and what can we do with it in Teams? So um, we haven't got a lot of time, so I'm going to uh, kind of go through that pretty quickly. So um, we're going to talk about OpenAI and we're not going to talk about, um, you know, chat GPT and all that. But OpenAI um, obviously offers different products. Um, and obviously the, the main one that we're talking about here is, is DALI 2, allows you to generate an image from a description and we'll go over that in a bit more detail in a second. But um, obviously we know the other ones like GPT and ChatGPT and another one Whisper. Those are different services. DALI 2 is just an, another one of those open AI services. So it's not uh, its own company or anything like that. It's just part of the open AI suite. Um, so if you've got access to the other APIs, you'll have access to, to DALI 2 as well. So um, what is it? Um, it allows you to generate an image from a text input. So a dog eating an ice cream wearing a hat, you can you, you know you can type that, type whatever you want, and it will generate what it thinks you're asking for. Uh, you can be a bit more descriptive, um, so you can say it needs to look like an oil painting, or it needs to look hand drawn, or whatever, um, and then it will kind of use the AI power to kind of try and get what you're asking for. It's not always great. Doesn't always work exactly like AI. It doesn't always work exactly as you intend, but that's the the general kind of gist of it. So how uh, it's priced is depending on how high resolution the image needs to be, depends how much the uh, uh, the image costs. Um, and in addition to this, you can also request to have uh, multiple attempts. So you could say a dog wearing a uh, dog eating ice cream wearing a hat, and you could say I want five different variations on that image, and then you can choose which one you want to use. But ultimately, you've paid for all five to be generated. So you would pay, in this case, let's say at higher resolution, you pay two cents per image, even if you only really wanted one of the five uh, to be used. So. Today, we're just going to talk about a particular scenario, uh, which is uh, there's no easy way for me to find an obscure picture of a photo that I want to insert into a Teams conversation. So, you know, maybe having a bit of a, a, a laugh or a joke with with a colleague and you'd be, it'd be good if, you, you know, there was a photo that existed of this particular thing. Obviously, it doesn't exist in the world, but I can use, uh, you know, the power of AI. I can generate that that picture or that image um, and then insert it into a Teams conversation. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use Teams message extension, messaging extension. It seems to be used inter interchangeably, but I'll call it message extension. Um, and the idea here is that you can access it by clicking the three dots on a message um, and then using it to uh, generate an image. Or um, it's actually also at the bottom of the uh, the message bar, um, uh, you know, with sort of the compose message bar at the bottom of Teams. You can also access it from there. So um, what a message extension is uh, used for is it's uh, interacting with existing, or in this case, what we're going to be doing today is a new message. So the idea is that I want to insert something into the conversation. Um, it can be used uh, in, in, a, in a sort of a, a group conversation. It can be used in a um, personal conversation, or it can be used um, inside of a team uh, conversation. So um, quickly go over what solution overview I have today. Obviously, this doesn't have to be what you would use. It's just what I've used for the, the demo. So we effectively have uh, someone using a Teams client. They're sending a request, um, i.e. they're opening up the message extension. Uh, that then gets sent to bot services. So even though we're not really using a bot in the truest sense, you know, we're not having a conversation or anything like that, we are still using a bot framework to, uh, to facilitate this. And using the bot framework SDK uh, from a from a code perspective, and the idea is that the Teams client talks to the bot services, which is hosted in Azure. That then gets uh, relayed to wherever your code is running. In this case, I've got it running in an, uh, an Azure function, 
and then I'm calling OpenAI API to generate the image. And then that effectively generates a link where the image is located. In this case, it's I think they use Azure Blob Storage. And then we then feed that back through to the team's client with the image inside an adaptive card. So we'll quickly go over the, uh, if you don't have a lot of time, I'll quickly go over the uh, it working. We'll, we'll do a quick prayer to the demo guards, make sure it's it's all, all good. But um, yes, so I have done a few ones, like asked it to draw a, a dog saying choose love and we've got chove love, but you know, it's, it's near enough. Um, and we've also got some uh, sort of personal conversations here. So just with our, our, our good friend, Joanna. So these are previous ones I've tested earlier. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work now. So the idea is that we bring up the messaging extensions. Obviously, you've got all these usual ones in there. I'll create one called Dali2. Um, and the idea is that it will bring up a prompt and it will say, well, what's the description of the image? So I'll just put a, a cat and dog sleep on a couch okay now i'm not sure what's going to happen hopefully it's safe for work but this is ai so who can who can say um okay uh i think that's a dog and a cat we'll go with it i'm not entirely sure if it's half dog half cat but we'll we'll go with it um the idea is i could edit and i could change the uh you know the, the description but for brevity let's just say yep yeah, that's good and the idea is i can click send and then that appears as a new message inside the, the conversation. And obviously we, we include the description to say, this is what I've asked for, this is what it's given me. And that's about it from a demo perspective. I could write some more, um, but ultimately it's, yeah, it works that way every time. Now, as far as uh, what we need for it to work, uh, as I mentioned, there is a, a bot service, uh, Azure bot, whatever you want to call it, and that sits in Azure, and that's effectively the proxy between my code and the team's client. So we have a, got given it a, a very generic name, but you could call it whatever you wanted to in here. Obviously, you can upload an icon. And from a config point of view, it's actually really, really straightforward. We actually just point it at the um, wherever the, uh, the 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 code is listening on a HTTP endpoint. So in this case, I've got it tunneling back through to my local machine where it's running in VS Code. But ultimately, this could be in Azure or wherever. Um, so that's it from a config, except for actually just the channels. So the only other thing I've done in here is I've enabled the Teams channel to allow the, the bot service to, to receive requests from Teams. And that's it from a, a kind of configuration point of view. Um, as far as code goes, we have a couple of files, really, and that's about it as far as um, how it works. So we have a, uh, I'm just going to zoom in ever slightly. Just to make it a little bit bigger, we have a, a sort of wrapper for the Azure function. So this is the the forward slash messages endpoint, and effectively what we're doing in here is that the main thing is we have a an activity handler, and that handles all the different types of um, activities that the message extension would send to on a HTTP request. So we won't really worry about too much of how we set up the bot adapter, but ultimately the main part of the code is is this uh, is this bot file. And in here we have a, uh, it's extending the Teams activity handler. So these are Teams specific activities uh, for what framework. They're not ones that you could use in um, yeah, web chat or anything like that. Um, and effectively these methods are used for different purposes. So the first one is handle Teams messaging extension fetch task. So this is what gets run when you click on the message extension for the first time and it opens up. And if you remember, it had a prompt to say, please enter the, yeah, you know, what you want it, the, the AI to generate. Uh, in this case, I've got a uh, just a helper function that's um, effectively creating an adaptive card, and I'll go through the adaptive card in a second. Um, and it's then uh, creating, um, uh, returning effectively the adaptive card uh, alongside the message uh, extension action response. And obviously, you can set the size and the height and what the title of the card is going to be, and, and so on. Um, so that's what happens when you click the message extension. Um, and then from once the message extension submit action is sent, this is when I've completed saying I want a dog and a cat lying on a couch. When I click send, that's then triggers this activity. And in here, we're effectively uh, passing through the open API key as an environment variable. And then we are effectively just creating using the open AI module where we're creating uh, an image and all we're doing is we're passing through the image description, which is one of the fields um, in the in the, uh, the adaptive card. 
um, or saying this is the number of images that we want to be generated. So obviously we're only generating one. We could generate five and have the user choose, but just to keep it simple, we're just generating one. And then again, just going back to the size of image that we want it to generate. And this again leads back to, to the cost of, you know, if you want a large image, it's going to cost more. Once we've got the response, we then uh, effectively inject this back into the adaptive card uh, response. And I'll go over the adaptive cards in a second, but ultimately we're passing through the, the URL and the description of the image. So that's what was asked for. So, you know, I ask for an image to be of whatever a type. This then inserts that back into the adaptive card response. So if I quickly look at the image response, we effectively have a really basic adaptive card. We've got the description as, a, as an accessible uh, speech option. So it will uh, describe it for uh, um, sort of accessibility reasons. But then also inside the, uh, the adaptive card, we have a text block with the description. And then we just have an image that links back to the image that the OpenAI uh, API has generated of the image. Um, so once we've generated the adaptive card, we then have the ability to create um, uh, an activity preview. Um, and the activity preview is when it says, this is what I'm going to put in the chat. And then you've got a send button or an edit button. If you click edit, it goes back to the previous step. If you click send, then um, it inserts into the conversation. So that's what they call a bot message preview type of um, response. Handle editing of results, that's when you click edit. So you go, actually, and that's not quite what I wanted. I click edit, that then sends it back to the original step. So again, we're then generating the prompt to say, what would you like? And then finally, the final um, method is when we've got the prompt to say, this is what I want, you know, we're going to insert into the conversation. Are you OK? You click send, it then triggers this activity. And like this is effectively it's using the bot framework to basically say, yeah, OK. We're going to send the activity preview from the previous uh, step and then effectively it posts it as a message into the conversation. Um, so previously to this point, it hasn't, nothing's been inserted into the conversation. It's just been with inside the message extension we, uh, sort of pop out. Um, this effectively then posts it into the channel or to the conversation. Uh, and we add an on behalf of a um, bit of data to show that it's not me personally that's inserted it, but a bot has inserted it on my behalf. And I think that is it from a code perspective, really. That's everything we have. So I'll just quickly go back to the uh, the slides. And final thing to say is it is already on uh, PMP uh, dev samples. So if you do want to have a look, try it out for yourself, then please do and let me know how you get on. And that's it for me. Awesome, Lee. Very, very cool stuff. I appreciate how you brought fun and technology together, and that's important for us to utilize uh, as a community and in our work. All right. Uh, questions, put them in the chat for uh, Lee, and we'll have an opportunity to chat about those later, how you can engage with them.